All right, YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to another X Defiant video. Today, we are talking about everything you need to know about the brand new faction GSK in X Defiant. Now, we did just have the full season one reveal from X Defiant over on the Ubisoft YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched the entire thing, I'm going to be breaking down everything that they had said about GSK in this video. Now, they did talk about a ton more stuff like weapons, the new map, and everything else going forward. So there are going to be some follow-up videos to this one covering all those things as well. Not only that, but we will also have a ton of Season 1 content coming to the channel very soon, as it does drop in less than 12 hours. So, for those of you guys that are looking to cover everything X Defiant, or you just want to know everything that there is coming, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on as only 10% of you guys that are watching these videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So subscribing is free, it helps me out, and it helps me keep bringing this content to you guys. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could go down and do that for me, as well as hitting the like button while you're down there. But with that said, let's jump into everything we need to know about GSK. Now, GSK is a little bit different to a lot of the factions in the game. It's based on characters from Rainbow Six, and for those of you that have played this game, it is not exactly a run and gun style of gameplay. So they have tweaked a few things with this actual faction to make it run better in X Defiant. So the GSK is more of a defensive specialist and you'd be familiar with this if you had played R6. However, these are gonna be most capable in zone control and occupy because I feel like these are the ones where you're gonna to have to lock down areas. Now, the ranked mode is going to feature both of these modes, so I feel like we're going to see quite a few GSK players running through ranked this season. It's just my guess. I don't know for sure, but I feel like it's going to be really useful having at least one or two players playing with this faction in ranked. Now, let's talk about the abilities for this new faction. The ADS trophy system is the first thing that they're going to get, and it's exactly what it is. The ADS is a defensive system that's basically going to stop any incoming grenades, whether that be frags or semtex or anything like that. Whatever is coming into that area, it is going to destroy all of those explosives. It's going to absorb every grenade thrown at it while active, which is something really interesting because I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, in Rainbow Six, if you're using this ability, it's only going to absorb a certain amount before it does deactivate. Well, it's a little bit different in X Defiant. They did say in the season one reveal video that it is going to absorb absolutely every grenade that's thrown in when it is active. Now, this could be super helpful for locking down a point, like I said before, in zone control or occupy. If you need to place this down, it's going to stop them from just clearing you out really quickly. I think one of the best ways to clear a point, especially in occupy, is to just throw a grenade in there and watch it clean everybody out. So. It's one of those things that's basically a direct counter to any sort of grenade spam uh, in these modes. The other thing worth mentioning as well is that it's on a 25 second cooldown. Now the 25 second cooldown may sound like a lot, but obviously when you're playing, it's not going to feel like that long. It's going to come back quite quickly and you're going to use it a ton during these matches. And one thing that they were mentioning in the video as well, and one thing that one of the developers actually brought up as a point or a tip I guess that he was using is to be aware of the placement that you're using for this ADS. So when you're placing the ADS it doesn't necessarily just have to be on the floor. You know how like in Call of Duty you would throw down a turret or a sentry um, and it has to be on the ground. This is very different. You can pretty much just put this anywhere that you want. When you put down a trophy in COD you've got to put it on the ground. Yeah I can't have it on a ceiling. You can't have it on a wall. And this one, you can pretty much put it anywhere that you like. You can throw it up above a doorway. You can throw it around a corner. You can have it in the weirdest little spots where the enemy can't see it to destroy it. And that way you've got the full amount of time that it's active to actually use the benefits of this ability. So it's going to make GSK really good in this ranked mode when you're playing those two game modes I mentioned before. Now, the second ability that they have is the shock wire. And this is used to lock down an area. Now, it's pretty much electrocuted barbed wire, and this is going to be so much fun to figure out the best place to use it. And one of the biggest things I find with this is it's probably going to counter a lot of the movement demons and those sweaty players that like to swing corners and jump into objectives and just attack at full pace. 
this is really a good counter to them because yes, while the shockwire can be destroyed, there are so many things that you can do to support the shockwire so that it doesn't actually get destroyed. Now, the two ways to eliminate the shockwire is via explosives, so grenades, or actually using it in terms of a melee. If you hit it with a melee, it is going to destroy it. Or I'm not really 100% sure they didn't mention it if the dead sex ability can actually change it to their own. I assume that it would be able to because the dead sec ability is supposedly changes all other abilities to your own, but we'll have to wait and see until we actually get in game. So I think that would be really useful as a dead sec and it might give it a little bit more use to actually play it because if you have an enemy team that is running ADS uh, and shock wire locking down an area, running dead sec can pretty much just turn the tables and give you all of the benefits that they thought they had for your own team. So something to be aware of and think about there. But yeah, again, with this shock wire, I think it's really going to counter those movement demons because if they do go to swing into an objective or swing around a corner and the shock wire is placed on the ground there, they're not going to have time to see it and be able to get rid of it before the enemy team is actually annihilating them. So I think this is a really fun idea. I don't know how campy it's going to get. That's the only thing I'd maybe be aware of. It might feel a little bit campy at first. But again, we need to know ways to play around it. And that's part of why I'm making this video. So I think the shock wire is best going to be used in combination with the ADS, forcing enemies to have to melee it to destroy it. So if you're placing this down in an area, place an ADS down nearby, make sure you're not allowing the shock wire to be blown up via grenades and make the enemy have to get up in close quarters to actually destroy it. That way, by the time they actually do destroy it, you're ready to take them on in a gunfight and you've probably got the upper hand at this point. Now, one other thing worth noting with the shock wire is that it does have a larger area of effect than it did in Rainbow Six. Now, this is the reason why it's basically because this game is more free flowing. In Rainbow Six, you could punch holes through walls and you could shoot different like eyesight eye lines out through each of the walls. And in X Defiant, you can't do that. So what they've done is they've basically placed down a larger area of effect for this um, so that you can pretty much use it to your will. Now let's talk about the ultimate for the GSK. The ultimate is the flash shield. And one of the notes from the developers that they said was they thought this was going to be an entry point ability to a lot of these objectives. But what they actually found was people were using it as more of a last stand. So you're getting into a lot of trouble. You're trying to hold down an objective. You're being pushed by the entire enemy team. Your team's respawning and they actually have to just survive as long as they possibly can. They found that people were using the flash shield in this situation more so than actually infiltrating an area to get in there in the first place. So I feel like it'll be useful in both. You know, if a team's locking down a point and you need to be the first to break that point and try and get in there, then the flash shield's going to be really useful. As far as a last stand, yeah, we all do it. It's the same as using one of the other factions where it's a last resort that you're surrounded and whether you're playing the phantoms or you're playing somebody else, using an ultimate ability in an objective point is the survivability trait. It is something that's going to keep you alive that little bit longer so that your team can respawn and get back to the point. But one thing worth noting with the flash shield is it looks like your secondary is going to be available to be used with the flash shield. This doesn't actually cancel the ability. So you can still switch between using the flash shield and using your secondary. This is a great thing because obviously if they didn't do this, then you would basically just have the phantoms riot shield with a flash ability attached to it. So I'm glad that you are actually able to fire a weapon while using the flash shield and it doesn't actually cancel the ultimate. Now, with that being said, the flash, you actually get multiple uses of the flash inside the objective area. So it's not just a one and done flash ability. You can use it multiple times while the ultimate is available. And this is going to be really helpful. They mentioned in the video that if you're trying to lock down a point and you're the only person left, again, you're trying to survive until your team can respawn and get back to the point. This can be really useful for just flashing the enemy team until your team's able to get back and help you. So the flash shield sounds like it's going to be really good again in ranked and also in unranked play, but most specifically in those zone control and occupy game modes. 
They've also said that the GSK has something interesting that none of the other factions have, which surprised me. And to be honest, I don't know how fair it is, but it has a passive ability as well, which is the ballistic helmet. Now, the ballistic helmet for the GSK allows you to have less headshot damage, basically reducing the amount of deaths you're going to have by headshot. Snipers will no longer one-shot the GSK from full health, or I guess they won't one-shot in general. One thing that you do find a lot in X Defiant is if you're playing against a team that has a lot of snipers or has at least one good sniper, that you're going to be eliminated really quickly on certain lives, and you're going to get one-shot quite a bit. The GSK has a foolproof denial to this. I saw one of the clips in the video that they were playing in the background of the reveal and the GSK took 90 headshot damage from a sniper rifle. Now, that is ridiculous considering that the Phantoms, obviously they have 120 HP, they're the exception to the rule, but now you've got the GSK as well that will no longer one-shot. So they kind of quietly nerfed snipers, or not nerfed them, but they made other factions better so that snipers are less effective. And it makes sense with the GSK because they are a defensive specialist, but It'll just be interesting to see how they play out in game and what we can expect when it actually does come time for season one launch. Now, this is everything we know about GSK. Obviously, if you guys want to know more about the weapons and the maps and everything else that's going on in season one, I will have a follow up video to this. So again, make sure you're subscribed with the notifications turned on. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the GSK as well. I'm curious to see if you think these will be really good, really bad. Do you think they're going to be viable in ranked? Personally, I think they will be. And just any other questions that you guys might have about season one. I'll be answering a ton of them down in the comments. So make sure you drop down there and let me know what you'd like to know. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.